Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12 of Horror House, the Halloween special, and I have a guy sat next to me today for the, f for the first time since the first episode of this show. Um, please welcome, he's a radio presenter in this fine country, it's uh, Sam Ard. Hello, Morgan. Sam, you're not particularly interested in horror, so people would ask, why the hell are you here? Uh, come see <laughs> the, the master at work and learn more about your amazing genre. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah, so no, Sam isn't particularly a horror fan, but I wanted to get him here for this because uh, I sort of want to get his side of to why he doesn't necessarily gravitate towards the genre and of course people that are calling in later yes this episode will have multiple guests um, people that are calling in later uh, give some recommendations to him to try and get him into the genre yeah some I'm open to it good good why is it then that you don't feel like this particular genre is the one for you just never been that into horror films really i like a nice uh film that's got a good story or oh there's some good stories in horror a nice happy there's ending some great stories in horror there's some happy endings in horror you some comedy think. oh there's plenty of comedy in horror evil dead that's I don't, my recommendation anyway. don't dislike horror films but if i if we sit down in an evening if i was with the family or something and my sister grace likes horror films i'll try and push her towards a different section what okay what type of films would you say you like the most then um any film that i like a good comedy um any film that's just got i like action films films that are kind of fast paced have a nice good story with horror i don't like films that kind of mess with your brain i'm not i don't watch a film for that i watch a film for a bit of escapism for a, hmm. a nice yeah. story and I'm not a big fan of gore either so that kind of rolls out another type of right. horror film so you don't like gore and you don't like films that mess with your head you've basically covered two the main two sides of horror there the violent yeah. and the psychological so that's I think but that's a good explanation why, yeah um, this is where it's sort of difficult to come up with any sort of suggestion of what to get you into the genre I have enjoyed horror films um, what what sort of, what ones have you uh, have you enjoyed then um, I can't remember the name of one of them that's uh, always a good <laughs> it's similar to paranormal activity similar to paranormal activity yeah I mentioned it to you the other day actually Did you? Um, it's not Inception, Inception. Insidious. 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 Oh, Insidious is good. To be fair, Insidious. I really enjoyed that. Okay, so you're into the, maybe it's supernatural. Yeah, I like those. But it depends okay, what you fancy. Right. Okay. What about The Conjuring? Never seen it. See that? That's the biggest thing. Another one I liked. Days. I did like The Ring. The Ring. See, there's something here. The Ring. Insidious is decent enough, but The Ring is great. The American remake, obviously. You, I don't think you'll have seen the original Japanese. No. No. But, um, yeah, The Ring The Ring's good. Scary. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of the more ten supernatural type things, because The Ring's, although it's technological, it's sort of supernatural. So it? those kind of horror films I like. Okay, so... I've seen the stuff like, does Kill Bill count? I wouldn't class Kill Bill as a horror film as much as a crime action mm. whatever the gore Tarantino is horrific. thing. The gore is horrific, but um Okay, right. See this is interesting. So maybe it's more modern horror that you like. Maybe yeah. you don't maybe you wouldn't go that side of the millennium. I think I know why I don't like horror films that much, because of a bad experience I had. A bad experience. When That's I was younger, a good story. Please take over. When I was younger, um, my parents had split up, so I'd go over to my dad's at the weekends and stop there. And um, he 
would let us watch more things and then on one evening Jeepers Creepers okay came on the TV and I was only about 10 I think 10 or 11 yeah, or 9 and that kind of freaked me and my sister out and then there was a bit of an argument in the uh, <laughs> that we shouldn't have been allowed to watch it and then it tainted the horror genre for me. oh well that's so I've only just realised that's why it comes that's from that's ruined you Jeepers Creep blame Jeepers Creepers for one less I can't even remember what world. happens I remember some bodies are buried I mean there's enough of that uh, I've not seen Jeepers Creepers for many, many years, to be honest. But I was probably nearer to ten than I am. But it had the opposite now. effect on you. Well, possibly, quite possibly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, as this is the Halloween special, of course, and getting past the whole idea of Sam's like-slash-hate relationship with horror, um, Halloween, you obviously must enjoy to an extent as a holiday i don't look forward to it as much as christmas no i love christmas because it's nice Sam, sam's the happy one yeah. in this sort of duo <laughs> christmas um, markets and everything yeah. i love all that um yeah halloween it kind of happens it's more bonfire night that i look forward to i love uh, all the nice okay. going to the fireworks wrapping it warm and all of that um we haven't I had done a lot for Halloween for years. We used to have a massive family thing and we'd all dress up and everything. What's your best costume that you've ever... <sighs> I can't remember. I think or that you've ever seen? That I've ever seen? Um, I don't actually know. I, I dressed up as a car accident victim once. See, that's pretty dark. I've go. never got that dark. I was only I, you, I, when I was a child, I used to go cl like classic. Like your vampire, your Frankenstein's monster. Um stuff like that but i will stand by that the best halloween costume i've ever done and i'm likely to ever do was last year's what was that i went as green man from it's always sunny in philadelphia and people who don't people who don't watch it's always sunny or aren't familiar would have just seen a guy in a green skin suit i was gonna ask what is that yeah they would have just seen a guy in a green it's skin a suit set, looking strange it? and um where did you dress up as that for well, that was that was like the just the parties around, around here. Oh really? Yeah, we just, I just went... walked around. Wow, I can see it was, it was quite cold. I'm amazed you didn't get arrested. Well, I was with other people. Oh, I was right. on my own. That's okay then. Yeah. Um, I just did back pictured you going to like McDonald's in a green suit. No, especially but, yeah. when it's cold, you don't want that, you know. No, it, it, was, it was pretty cold to be fair. Um, um, crown jewels. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Green Man is my best halloween costume that i've ever done because i was far more into it than anyone else you know, like it was quite clearly that i was loving dressing up like that Explain. but no one else had a clue what i was doing so who is green man in green this series? man is he's just a character played by charlie kelly who, who is played by charlie day in the series but it's always sunny is an indescribable series i don't supposed to be good yeah it is the funniest show on television um but yet occasionally and it's special occasions when green man pops up on it's always sunny people lose their mind um but yeah it's just a character that he dresses up as and he just sort of runs around and does strange things gets completely hammered <laughs> did you just dress it possibly um yeah are you dressing up for this year i'm not dressing up this year i don't think anyway i've not really planned anything to do on halloween other than have a marathon of the best in this fine collection you see behind me have you described this to your listeners before what the collection yeah the the extensive movie because your room compared to mine is a bit of a blank canvas yours is filled with amazing posters yes, there's a lot of a lot of decoration going a wall of dvds it is it is a wall really um i don't think i've ever put a picture of that wall it's not a wall you i should. know someone that will be listening to this and someone that a few listeners will know brian brian hurst that man in his dvd bunker that is a movie collection that is not beaten nowhere near beaten he has seriously like walls plural covered you can't see wall 
for DVD. It's, it's insane. Brian, I commend you. You know I do. <laughs> so Halloween, you say you're not necessarily a huge fan of, especially compared to Christmas. Do you think that is because uh, Britain does Halloween a lot worse than other countries you may see, especially the US? You see pictures of the US, they go absolutely insane for Halloween. Do you think it's the sort of lack of community I don't think it's as big a thing here. No, I mean, it isn't. To be, and I, I don't really know why. It's certainly not as... Well, because it, it doesn't come from this country, does it? Well, it's no. American. But I noticed the past few years we have less trick-or-treaters and things like that. I did, I used to love Halloween when I was younger. Dressing yeah. up and going around the houses. Yeah. I, you forget how you felt when you did that, don't you, until you talk about it again. Yeah. But yeah. I think I haven't grown out of it just stopped really thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, Halloween's different for having obviously grown up um, you know, not trick or treating now. Did you not do that? Not do it now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. um, yeah I did it like 10 years ago, but um, yeah, that was always fun, it was always something you look forward to, but mainly because you got a load of chocolate and stuff. Yeah, um, I think it was just the whole experience of it I used to enjoy. But I've always loved scaring people. Yeah. And being scared. Which yeah. Which is why I sort of gravitate towards Halloween. I don't think I've ever ho- decided my own costume. Really? It was always my mum or someone. Because I haven't dressed up for it in like five years. We just haven't well, done no, anything to be fair, for it. The last time, well, if we exclude last year, um. Well, no, there was one Halloween where everyone dressed up as me. That was a co- that was a few years ago. That was maybe three years ago. Put we a went... fake ginger beard on. No, I didn't have the beard at that time. I didn't have a beard at that time. But yeah, we all went to his house party. But it's, I, you know, just in normal sort of clothes. But then it turns out that everyone had had masks of me made. Wow. You know, like you'd see, like in costume shops, they have masks of. That's a compliment. Pseudo famous people like X Factor. Had uh, they heard your podcast as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't a thing until uh, May of this year, April, May. May, I think. Um, but yeah, that was fun. That was uh, interesting because everyone just walked around with masks of me that they, for some reason, made. They, I know they weren't sure how I was going to take it, whether I'd be horribly offended or. Uh, I think it depends on what kind of person you are. You're. As somebody who knows you, you're a nice, you know, chill person. Oh. Nice, chill person. I I know people who go like, oh god, why have you done that? It's like, oh. yeah, who'd be offended? But no, I, it's one of those things. I I admire people who do celebrate it. Just like me and my friends in Nottingham, which is where I live. Like when we're in the sixth form, we just never did anything. We we had mm. parties and stuff, but Halloween kind of passed us by. I just. The main thing for me, I love Christmas and I love Bonfire Night, which is next week. It is, but of course the US doesn't have Bonfire Night. Really? Well, it doesn't, how could it have Bonfire Night? What does a Bonfire Night come off? It comes off a guy, guy box trying to blow up Parliament. Yeah, but you, you're ruining your There's own argument. none of that. Halloween came from the US to here. Yeah, but Halloween is, it's not a holiday based on... Facts. It depends what you believe. I don't even know where it comes from, to be honest. I it's don't. sort of it, Halloween is the day when the spirits sort of migrate. I heard that you dress up as camouflage from to blend in because all of the ghosts are around on that day. Yeah, all the yeah, it's the idea. All of the spirits rise and sort of move on All Hallows Eve. I'm not particularly sort of um, are you supernatural? Well informed on the origins of Halloween I sh- probably should be but um, as, as far as I know it's spirits rising and sort of migrating from place to place that's why I still feel like they Halloween should have bonfire night in the US it wouldn't make sense though Te- uh, I can it see it wouldn't make point. any sense because if you're living night, in the US right now you're missing out it's a great night it's Although just you fireworks don't... you just have fireworks you, yeah. you get that on on the 4th of July but it's, it's so just the same it is a British thing though like it's all incredibly of you British going thing. out freezing your nuts off putting a massive coat on 
massive scarf, gloves with the family and watching some fireworks. And uh, yeah, I've got to go to about 500 because... 500 fireworks? <laughs> no, that's slight exaggeration, but with work I have to um, go to them. Oh, okay. So yes, yeah, so it might be a bit different this year, but still. I like Halloween, I like bonfire night, like Christmas, like Easter. But... Halloween is nowhere near the top of the pipe. But it's not on the top of my list. Is Christmas it, it, is number one. Is it above Easter? Um, Easter no. is so low down on my list. No, I love it. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> There's more chocolate going around at Halloween than there is. Easter is so low down on my list. It's not celebrated. Do you not get, with Christmas though, do you not get that feeling? That feeling? It's like... The Christmas feeling. Yeah. See, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of Manchester. But... Okay. Oh. Why but, do you live here, Sam? But at Christmas, it's the best place ever because the Christmas market. It's an markets. excellent place at Christmas. But we're not talking about Christmas. We're talking about Halloween. And let's welcome some more guests. Ooh, good link. Guys, I have brought two other guests onto this Halloween special of Horror House. You know them, you love them. They are the hosting pair of Odd Shaped Panel. It's Tom and Kimber. How are we doing, guys? Oh, we're spooky. Great, great. I uh, I wanted to introduce you to uh, a friend of mine who is sat next to me right now, who is also a guest on this episode. Uh, say hello to Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, Sam. Hello. How are you? Good. It's nice meeting you for the very first time. <laughs> nice meeting you, voice wise joke because we just had to edit a lot of things out but let's don't tell them that i'll tell them that this is a very natural show oh never know um but yeah of course this is just a very casual halloweeny chat um i know you two obviously see halloween as probably the best holiday of the year very similar to me in that sense but sam here sees it uh, quite a way down the pile. He prefers uh, the sort of light-hearted joyfulness of things like Christmas. Love it. Christmas is depressing. Halloween is fun. <laughs> Christmas is like, you're broke and there's snow. That's a good point. <laughs> People are always broke yeah, at think, Christmas. Yeah, Halloween is so fun because you get to dress up, you get to be somebody else for a different night or... Yeah. Some people I would feel like myself included seem like you get to be yourself for one your, night. Your true self for one costume. night. Yeah. Yeah. But Halloween's awesome. Again, it's right near my birthday as well. Yeah. So I've always been a big fan. Um, and I told you before I had my left arm is all tattooed. It's just kids trick or treating and costume and a haunted yeah. house. Um, everything for me that is spooky and fun is celebrated during Halloween. Well, I mean, for me, well, go ahead. the great man himself said it, it's as much fun to scare as to be scared. Love that guy. And, and for me, I, I grew up in upstate New York, and my favorite season is fall. Um, getting that brisk chill in the morning mm -hmm. and seeing the leaves fall and clatter, and then when it starts to get dark and there's wind and you can hear it, it sounds like there's footsteps behind you. Fall is just spooky in general, so for it all yeah. to come, like... To a climax on October 31st is like just one of the greatest things that I, like I, I have always remembered enjoying Halloween. There's not been one Halloween where I was just like bumped. Oh Other yeah. Other holidays have been. Well yeah, I mean we were me and Sam were seen before Sam. I want you to maybe interject on this. Mm. Um, we were just saying that like Halloween isn't doesn't seem as big sort of any more over here as when we were kids and that's obviously because you know when you're kids you do the whole dressing up and trick-or-treating and uh, everything but that you know doesn't or at least we don't see it happening that I often used to anymore. love it yeah I used to oh. love it when I was younger and then it kind of you forget about it a bit over here as you grow up and it kind of passes you by more yeah I mean you see you know you see pictures of the states during the Halloween season and well I at least just think well why can't we do that here why why is Halloween so 
sort of shun the I'm hunger. Halloween in the, uh, the States kind of a lot of different um, a lot of different like peoples have have embraced it to make it their own. The amount of um, LGBT Halloween parades there are in the country, mm. um, they bring outstanding numbers. And I mean, and if anything else, like, America's kind of depressing, so why would we want to grow up? <laughs> yeah, the, the thing I've noticed about Halloween as an adult is I think it's more fun as an adult as, than it is as a, as a kid because at this point, not only do I have, like, my own financial means to buy whatever costume I would like. Yeah as opposed to, like, draining my poor parents. Yeah. Um, also, I have the ability to, again, make stuff at a way greater level than I did when I was a kid. And I think that's what I like about Halloween, too. Like, Christmas, you can get disappointed, like, if you don't get what you want or you can't get other people what you want to get for them. But on Halloween, like, you make your own fun. Like, Halloween is as fun as you make it um, with, y you know, the costumes and everything. And there are so many ways to facilitate that. You went to movies, and you may do a horror movie like yeah. that. If you're into board games, there are plenty of horror-themed board games. Like, it's just a night to embrace the spooky, and yeah, I don't know. I I feel like me and Kimber embrace that all year round, but not not everyone does. And for people to take time and to enjoy it with us, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I I, I Monday night I will definitely well pretty much all of Monday and all of Sunday I'm just gonna have one horror film or another just on in the background just to bring up the atmosphere because I I was saying to Sam before I don't think I'm doing anything this Halloween night which may be a depressing thought considering last year was a great Halloween that had my um, fav the favourite costume I've ever done it, I, I went as Green Man from It's Always Sunny <laughs> Nice. But no one knew who I was, so they just saw a <laughs> random guy in a green skin suit, and I was just loving it. You're gonna have to come visit us for Halloween one year. I, I think that'd be a that good so time much. for you to come. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you what. There's places in in the states that you would think would be really cool on Halloween. I spent one Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts. Yeah, and it was the lamest thing I've ever been to. I can't. Um, that's insane. Not only is it like a tourist attraction, like you know, like, uh, making bread off of, like, the tragedies that happened to, like, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of people, that, or, uh, hundreds of years ago, yeah. um, it's, it, it, you would, like, they did a parade, like, I thought it was gonna be the coolest thing in the world, and mm -hmm. I tell you, I was stressed as the crow, and my costume was better than half those people in that parade, and it's Salem, Massachusetts, yeah. you should come, we'll show you a good time. Well, it's nice to know that the offer's on the cards, of course, isn't Always. it? Um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to get into a couple on the spot questions for you for uh, just a few that were sent in before this episode. Um, Nolan Dean asks best horror villain Vincent Price in every movie he ever did. <laughs> How did I know you'd say something like that? Um, I mean, me and Sam haven't even thought about these either. Sam doesn't have a clue. He's looking at me with a face of horror itself. Yeah, there you go. My pick is Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to go Witchfinder General if you're going Vincent Yeah, Price. if you Perhaps want... Perhaps his yeah. most villainous That's role. definitely his most villainous role. But, I mean, if we're going real classic... I pre now, I presume he means you know horror killer slasher killer I presume that's what's in his head that's at least what's in my head my favourite is gotta be Freddy yeah that's what I just I just said Freddy to Dom too that's funny my favourite as well Freddy like Jason Jason and Michael My, my uh, sorry Jason and Michael Myers are yeah. just really boring like those movies the focus aren't on the creatures the focus is on the people around them and like try they're stuck in the situation um where it comes to freddy freddy is this huge pile of burnt charisma yeah. that everyone gravitates he's just so much fun and the way people embraced him in the 90s was crazy they had like tv shows and yeah. all of the merchandise um yeah. i mean freddy yeah, freddy's I huge 
yeah, you can have like a Freddy nightmare too, and it's really awful, and it feels very real because of the whole yeah. theme of the movie, like being you can't, you don't want to go to sleep, you have no control over your dreams. I can't say I've ever got that far. But um, Sam, what do you think about maybe one day watching Nightmare on Elm Street? Well, I'm o I'm open <laughs> to if I had to watch one horror film to get me into horror films, what would I watch? That's my question. Tom Kimber, what do you Ooh. recommend? One like okay, here's one the definitive like, horror film. I can tell you one that came out last year, and if you're a big fan of Christmas, you're gonna love it. Krampus. <laughs> He's back on it. <laughs> He's back on it. Krampus was really good. Um, it actually has the same director as Trick or Treat, which yeah. is a anthology um, movie. I guess it has multiple tales. I think it's four stories in, in it. He's just but, been uh, brought on to direct <laughs> Godzilla two, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't know, man. Godzilla one, I fell asleep in the theater three times, and I was wow. so bummed with the Brian Cranston stuff. I don't know. I always like when I'm picking like a first horror movie for people. I usually want to know like a little bit of what yeah. they're into because there's so many different diverse types. Well, of Sam, take over. Well, it's, I have watched quite a few. In the, what did I we decide on? So I like. Well, he, what was that film called? He said he liked Insidious. Okay. And um, the, ring. the Ring. Okay. Oh, well, Are you opposed to like older movies? Would you like some comedy in there? Yeah, yeah, I like comedy. That would be probably I'd probably probably go Evil Dead. See, or I, Army of Darkness. I was gonna say Evil Dead, but in the discussion, little discussion we had before this, um, I was gonna say Evil Dead. Two. Yeah, maybe Evil Dead Two because it is more yeah. comedy based. But he 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 doesn't like gore, oh. and it's gonna be a problem to watch Evil Dead. I don't mind it, yeah, but I will close my eyes. If you close your eyes during the gore scenes in Evil Dead, you will have not watched a minute of Evil Dead. <laughs> That's the idea. It's, dark, so it's not all. It's, it's more of a comedy than it is the gore. Like the gore is very tame compared to Evil Dead. Yeah, Army of Darkness. yeah, I suppose. But Army of Darkness is sort of it's, it's more of a fantasy. Yeah. Than the horror. It's its own special weird thing, Army of Darkness. And, yeah. Um, yeah. For people who don't like gore, I typically tend to lean towards very classic horror because that's the type of thing I like anyways. Yeah. And you're not going to get that gore level when you're watching like a movie that's from the 30s to 50s, you know? You know, a movie that I would recommend if you like good ghost stories um, that but not gore and stuff, it's a really good movie. It's called The Others and it has Nicole Kidman in it. Yeah. Oh, the old, yeah. I think I've, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's not I would, I would too old. I talk about it in more length, but I don't want to like ruin it, you know what I mean? Because the, it has a really good ending, so um, I would recommend that. And it's, it's suspenseful. I had something going on in the background. It's creepy. Yeah. Um, definitely good for a Halloween night, but no, not really gory in any means. Yeah, you said you like sort of ghost supernatural type yeah. stuff so Monday maybe, night I'll try Monday, Monday night the others that's on Sam's watch list <laughs> nice or Kimber I know you were uh, gonna say something that would be older if um, if you're interested at all in the sort of really classic 30s to 50s horror that's 90s I would 30s. not watch them I don't really watch them a lot but I'm open to it He's open to it. House what? on Haunted Hill. Awesome. I love it. It's so good. I might go House on Haunted Hill if we're talking, like, if you want some, like, fun, campy, old horror that's not gory and, um... And is a bit funny. Is a bit funny yeah. in parts. And really easy to watch. Like, lighthearted. I think it's funny that this is, like, the topic of discussion right now because you both love Vincent Price very much and once all that gore started, he did not like it. No. He was very no. against the gore in the movies. Which no. Is interesting. Yeah, Sam, you see that poster behind. Oh yeah, House on Haunted Hill. <laughs> yeah, see, watch House on Haunted Hill. Look at Vincent Price's beautiful face. <laughs> I see it every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. Okay. So another question that we had was from Billy Billy Pollahan at the Buster Bill. Um, obscure or underrated horror titles? Question mark. Uh, Krampus. <laughs> I really like that movie, guys. Um, 
There's so many. Wizard of Gore, Suspiria, oh. Audition. Audition should be should be viewed by everyone. Audition is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sam shouldn't watch it. No. no, 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 Sam. I wouldn't recommend you watching Audition at all. Not this Monday. Um. No. Not this month. Maybe next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next year? Next year, if you're feeling up to it. Um, um, that's a difficult I think one. Classic, there's like, so TV, many. Like, you know, Class from Outer Space is a good one. Um, You've got to be in a in the right kind of mood to watch Killer Clowns, yeah. though. Um, this is a... Because there's, there's so I mean, many. There's, there's some Stephen King ones I like that a lot of other people don't really like that I like. Uh, like Langoliers. There's something about that movie I really like. I also okay. like Cat's Eye, and I feel like nobody else likes that one. I actually have it on DVD. Nobody talks about Cujo anymore. Like, it's always just... Talk, like, Cujo. Like, Cujo, I... I uh, Pet Cemetery. oh my god. Like, yeah, Pet Cemetery is one I really like. Um, but Cujo, I talked about on... Uh, on the Stephen King episode. That sort mm -hmm. of... That really got to me as a younger person watching it, because I was already quite scared of large dogs. So, that movie is the opposite of Old Yeller. It is. Yeah. It is definitely. How do you feel about sort of large dogs becoming incredibly violent and killing everybody? Being a dog lover yourself, Sam. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You know, I can see my little <laughs> dog Mabel doing that one day. So nice to be prepared. I'm not gonna say your friend. <laughs> 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 That's just gonna be like, oh, good job, man. <laughs> Oh. No, I'm also scared of large dogs, so I feel you on that particular fear, Morgan. Yeah. Um, that would be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, another one from Randall Sands was best horror genre, presumably like subgenre. Um, Vincent Price movies. <laughs> it's not really a genre, though, is it? As, a mu as much as it's just it a collection. In my heart it is. I mean, obviously, like, a big shout-out has to go to horror comedy because it's its yeah. own thing, and it takes the best parts of horror and just makes it... And it's I very would, it's very like, difficult to do. I mean, it keeps coming back to Vincent Price, but who else would you want to spend Halloween with? Right. If you could sit down right. and watch Sean's exactly. Dead with Vincent Price and just gauge his reaction, I think you would be blown away about how much we embrace his kind of camp. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that this... Not that Horror House needs to have any more price discussion on it whatsoever. It's but um, it's Halloween and the man runs Halloween. He does. Um, uh, I'm going to shout out to like body horror. Like To me, like you only yeah. get one body. Everyone's like dealt with having pain that they don't know what's going on and feeling like your body is turning against you. So yeah. to have like body horror, like especially like Cronenberg style yeah. is terrifying to me. Yeah, and and when, especially when you're at a younger age, when your body is already in a natural state of transformation, to go and like I remember like going through puberty and watching American Werewolf in London, and right. it struck a chord with me because I was growing hair in places I was. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like it, it really screwed to Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I never thought about that, but um, I also. If you can do a good sound footage movie, and there's not a lot of them, there's only very few. Diary of the Dead. Big sigh. Um, I, I, I like sound footage, but I, I don't like shaky cam, and I don't like just running for 20 minutes for no reason. Like, if it's a good story, and it adds to the movie, that's fine. But, um, that's a very slim margin. I, margin. I, margin, yeah, I, I just but can't everything. agree with people who enjoy found footage at all i tried watching at all, the, uh, at all. i tried watching the troll Blair hunters have you not seen troll hunters come on man am i just gonna offend you even more <laughs> right now um but yeah i mean obviously the one that everyone thinks of when they talk about found footage is blair witch project Once and i tried i tried watching the blair witch project and i did not like it at all like yeah. at all, I don't know what it is. It's just the idea. Of... All, you were you weren't around for when. Um... 
I mean, like, I was two years old when the Brawl yeah. Witch Project came out. You understand, like, before this movie came out, Sci-Fi put out this special about these kids and everything. Like, people thought it was real. Oh, yeah, like, I, I knew people thought it was the real. case of, like, viral, like, um, campaigning. It was creepypasta. Exactly, it might have been the yeah. first creepypasta. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sam, what do you think about found footage? So that's the Blair Witch Project. The Blair Witch Project is found footage. Yeah, I remember... Yeah. No, I didn't like it. I just felt like I was a bit on a roller coaster or something, a bit sick. It was all over the place. See, is this an age thing? Not very believable. No, no, no I, I, don't like found, I don't like found footage either, and part of it does have to do with the fact that I get motion sickness. So yeah, I get me, very much motion sickness. It's not the most interesting. I like horror to be a little over the top. And, yeah. Um, I get that found footage is like rooted in trying to be realistic, and that's like a little... Dull yeah. To me. Yeah. I'm more on. I like. I favor like the science fiction, like mm-hmm. mad scientist or experiment gone wrong type yeah. thing. That's more like my bread and butter with horror. Yeah. But but that's why I, I'm not saying as a whole. That's why I'm saying it's done right. Yeah. That that Diary of the Dead. I did like that, and I will say that um the the new season of American Horror Story that's currently on mm-hmm. had a twist where halfway through it became a found footage story. And the way that they did that, I really appreciated, and I thought it was innovative and truly unique. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say that, like, you can use sound footage, but I almost liked it better when it was supplemented by starting out as not being found footage and turning into it. Yeah. I don't, like, but the reason I keep bringing up Diary of the Dead is because it's, it's, there's a reason behind it, and it's because everyone, everyone is, like, going, put down the camera, dude, and he can't yeah. because... If he puts down the camera and if he's not looking through a lens anymore, it's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See so that like, that like that psychological twist. Like that's quite interesting. As an idea. So, yeah, it's done right, and if it has reason to, I think found footage can be done really well. But and I say this, and I hate a clover field, so don't get me wrong. Right. Like, I there's elements of it I do not like, and there's elements I do. I just think it's innovative to try to take horror and make it more real. Yeah. Well, but, <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day I will turn on to found footage and all that. But um, I the it's, it's one, it's one. How it's, it's, it's Romero, so you know yeah, it's, yeah. It has its roots. So it's to be. It's the only sort of. It's the only Romero zombie thing I haven't actually seen. You should see that one. It has some really cool kills in it, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Last question comes from Eric Monroe, who uh, says best horror TV series. Now, I know Twilight Zone is, of course, just you know the grandfather of creepy TV. Yes. But I can't get over how awesome Ash vs Evil Dead is. Yeah. That is definitely my answer for best horror tv series because i don't particularly care for american horror story um yeah it depends on the season it's a little on and off for yeah, me like I, there's seasons i love that she hates and seasons that she loves that i don't really like but um you bring up twilight zone do you does out over in the uk or, well, i don't know what it's called um <laughs> do they have twilight zone marathons I, I don't believe I've ever seen the Twilight Zone on sort of, you know, television. Really? On, like, That's free television. Here, in America for years, in America for years, every New Year's and New Year's Eve is Twilight Zone marathon. See, I'd love that. I just think it's weird that they do it on New Year's. I, I don't even think I've seen it on the Horror Channel. Really? That's so, crazy. Yeah, they're always playing it here. I mean, the, I like Black which is uh, very yeah I, I still like I still need to watch uh, Black Mirror I get still need to get episode, I still need to get around great. They, I, they start out with a very strange like bestiality first episode I would recommend skipping that one and going on to the rest because the rest are really good but the first one's kind of off putting right um, I actually thought something very similar to this question in my fan friction fight and your fan friction uh, uh, victory 
Yes, yes. I'm just very excited. I'm the first one to be a celebrity guest. I'm pretty, like, glad to hold that title. Um, but they asked what was the scariest TV show of all time, and I was blown away to find that I was the only one who picked a horror show at all. They, um, they went with Unsolved Mysteries and um, SVU were their choices, and I chose Masters of Horror, which would also be You're my right. choice for this question. Okay. Sam, do you watch any horror TV? Sam doesn't Not watch really. any horror TV. Um, yeah. Ash vs. Evil Dead is definitely my answer for that one. Anyway, um, guys, if you... You two, if uh, if you don't have anything else to say, that uh, I think might do it for us. If that's fine. Yeah, I would just say um, happy Halloween, everybody. Have fun. Any question? <laughs> and it's always nice talking to you, Morgan, as well. Of course. And uh, um, of course, likewise. We look forward to seeing you on the Halloween episode of OST. We're probably I'm gonna rush to edit that over the weekend, so we'll be out on Halloween. Hopefully. Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I can't wait. Is it gonna be the same time? Yes, nine. Yeah. Uh, nine our time. We yeah. might very late your time. We might yeah. rush a little later that night since it's a Friday and we know people are getting. But not for. But not for you. So. We'll, we will be there at nine. See, I get spe I get special priorities. Special treatment. Special treatment. We'll move you right to the top of the queue. Sam, Sam could be second in the queue if he comes. <laughs> Sam, do you, are you interested in uh, coming to this Halloween hangout party? I'm there. Still He's there. Sam's there. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Great. Give him the information. We'll see him. <laughs> we'll meet on camera this time. There you go. One step after another. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thanks guys, thanks so much Anytime Morgan I'm Tom... waiting for my second episode so when we figure out what that's going to be about let me know You'll get on again soon, don't we worry We do a holiday episode, Morgan He's so pushy yeah, you, Do you know what? Do you know what? You can be Christmas horror <laughs> and I will finally watch <laughs> Krampus I will finally watch Krampus for you and we can spend the entire yeah, episode that, talking about Krampus if you so wish and you should do like, like a, a holidays of horror theme one. That'd be really cool because there's so many like horror holiday Thanksgiving, movies. Thanksgiving, there's a lot of weird Thanksgiving holidays. Yes. There's one, and I can't remember the name of it, but there's a killer turkey. And the only line I remember is, she's like, there was like a line before when she wanted a turkey breast, and then he comes up to kill her, and he's like, nice just bitch, and then goes there, so it's like very like a Freddy Krueger turkey running around. Wow. Oh my god. Okay. That sounds <laughs> intriguing. Um, but anyway, yes, thank you guys for coming on. There will, of course, be many more guests to come on this very same episode of Horror House, the Halloween special. But for now, bye, you two. Bye. Later. Bye. Okay, guys, uh, Tom, Kimber, and Sam have left us now, but, as promised, another guest. Uh, he's a writer. He was on episode 9, talking very entertainingly and informatively about Stephen King. Uh, welcome back, Nolan Dean. Hey, Horror House fans, what's up? Um, Nolan... Halloween special this is so Halloween as a holiday do you love it do you hate it where does it rank for you it ranks as my favorite holiday dude it's uh, a time I can be as weird as possible no one cares well that's four to one we've got now it's my favorite it was Tom's favorite Kimber's favorite um, but Sam who was on before prefers Christmas because he's the joyful soul in the mi see, in, in the midst of all us um, lovers of the darkness, it's a shame I can't dress up as a clown this year or I'll get stabbed. <laughs> oh, I could see I could see you uh, doing that to be honest for some sort of um, <laughs> joke. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned dressing up. Um, what is what's the best costume you've ever done? Uh, well, it started off when I started making my own costumes because the store bought ones ended up sucking. Mm -hmm. And it was 2012. I got invited to my first Halloween party, and I made a pretty sweet Riddler costume. Ooh. And I was in character the whole time, getting drunk and giving people drunk riddles. That's fantastic. That's that is that is great. Um, what kind of riddles like? Dark um, riddles, presumably, because it was Halloween. Yeah, I googled a bunch of dark ones that I can't. I can't really remember because it was so long ago. But I was drunk when I was saying them. Brilliant. So God, they they could have been terrible. <laughs> like, but I wasn't like Jim Carrey level terrible. Ah, uh, Jim Carrey's playing Jim Carrey in Batman Forever. We can uh, we can forgive Jim Carrey, <laughs> or at least at least I can. Um. <sighs> Yeah, R Riddler's. Riddler is a a costume I've wanted to do for a while now, but I've never been able. Like, I, I, like you said, you made it. Like this, yeah. the ones you can buy have have never looked particularly great to me, and I am in no way able to make any sort of costume. Just don't wear the tights. That's all I can say. Well, I mentioned this. Um, before but the best halloween costume i ever did was last year when i went as green man from it's always sunny that's that's an interesting choice i gotta give you that i just recently started watching it <laughs> and i haven't got to green man uh, yet but the show's pretty good well when you get to green man you'll know exactly like most people were just looking at a guy in a green skin suit but i knew what i was really doing which was, the most the guy. which was the most important thing. Granted, wearing a green skin suit on a cold night wasn't the best idea. Isn't that just every other Saturday for you in Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it depends where you go in Manchester that that sort of stuff happens. But, um, yeah, that's great. Um, I do have a few questions that go for a couple were sent in before this um episode you yourself sent one if you want to talk about best horror villain but i already know the answer uh, everyone knows my answer too it's ghostface from scream because he could be living on your street he's not a supernatural threat he's a realistic threat and in a world where you've got people like elliot roger running around mm -hmm. i think ghostface is someone that could exist in the real world whereas people like freddy and chucky and jason are probably less likely to exist yeah, well, I mean, I know you have an unabashed love of Ghostface, like we all should do, because Ghostface is a great villain. Not my favourite, I said before my favourite, he's probably Freddy. He's got the most personality. Yeah, but, um, yeah, okay, so, um, Billy, Billy Pollahan asked, um, obscure or underrated horror titles? Well, can be either. I mean, I know we had a uh, pretty tough time coming up with some because there was just too many to sort of bring hmm. to the front. Underrated. Uh, it's funny you mentioned this because I just brought it up on the Screen Junkies fan page. Uh, I think the first Final Destination is extremely underrated, sitting at a 34% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, is it that low? Yeah, and I'm, I was surprised at that. I was expecting like at least maybe 50 or 60 because... It's a pretty fun movie, and the I've... filmmaking in it is surprisingly good for that kind of thing. Yeah, I wouldn't call it rotten. <laughs> um, you know, Final Destination is one that receives mixed feelings from me, but, you know, they're not bad. <laughs> they're not like 34%. It's you better know. than watching a scary movie, I'll give you that. Yeah. Although, Scary Movie when you're like 13, because I think I was like 13 the first time I watched Scary Movie, and I just sort of loved it. But I, 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 I wouldn't watch it now. Before Scary Movie. Oh, see, I didn't. That's a... Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> Some people still get them mixed up. Who gets them mixed up? Who does that? A lot of stupid people. Who well, are quite obviously. If you're out there and you get Screaming Scary Movie mixed up, help you. God, God help you. <laughs> Satan help you. Everyone, help. Just not the Wayans brothers. No, just not the Wayans brothers. Every, everyone but the Wayans. Although, the Wayans, I don't hate them. Yeah, they're fine. Um, we also have a question from Randall Sands, who asks best horror genre, subgenre. Ooh, uh, that, that, that is a really tough one, because I could think of my favourite, but I best. wouldn't say there's a really great one in that genre, so... I'll say, I'll, I'll give you one for filmmaking perspective, and I'll give you one for just, like, what I enjoy seeing. Okay. From what I enjoy seeing, it's the slasher genre. Yeah. Because, like I said before, it's, it's like, the most realistic, it's yeah. the most fun, it's kind of the most easy to do, but you can do so many things with it. Yeah. And from a filmmaking perspective, um, psychological horror has got to be the best one. Like, you get ones like The Shining and yeah. The Babadook and things like that, which are just they're not just scary but they make you think afterwards and then they just end up creeping you out even more yeah i mean psychological horror is sort of you know you always get the impression that more thought has gone into it from a filmmaking Definitely. standpoint whereas slashes are made mainly for sort of pure entertainment and a bit of fun which is why loads of people myself included and yourself included love them yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I got to agree with you in the fact that psychological is certainly better made than uh, probably any other subgenre of horror. But I don't think I mentioned this before. I will give a shout out uh, in terms of subgenre to the classic monsters of the thirties. Oh yeah, I've been uh, I've been looking through some of those because. I'm one of those few people who really wants this new Monsters Universe thing to work, but I'm just afraid that it won't. Oh, I'm right there with you. I really want it to work. I'm so, so nervous about it, though. I am so nervous about it. But It's the director for The Mummy that scares me the most. Who is it again? Remind me. Alex Kurtzman, who's brought you such classics as The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and ah. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Okay. But it's got a good cast and a good writer. Um, yeah, it, it, so. I'm going to keep the faith until I see a trailer and the trailer will lean me either way. I think that's the best way to go. But I'm so nervous that they're just going to ruin what they did so well, you know, 80 years ago. I, I, I'm right with you there because I actually, I'm one of the few that hates the Brendan Fraser mummy series. <laughs> that passionately hates it. It's worse than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Try rewatching it. It is so. I haven't. I boring. haven't watched any of them in a while. To be fair. People thought X Men Apocalypse was bad. This is like worse. And X Men Apocalypse basically ripped off the mummy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, for me, I mean, you know, those classic monsters, uh, they're just the fun to watch. It's the sort of idea that I prefer, you know, I sort of gravitate towards atmosphere and shadowy things, yeah. lighting, stuff like that. I love it when lighting is really prevalent in a film, which is why I love stuff like Suspiria. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, that the one that's getting remade with Chloe Moretz. Yeah, which oh, I can't abide, to be perfectly honest, that news. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the shadows, It, you know, because of the black and white, uh, shadows were really, really important. It just, for me, really feels, you know, I get a uh, very intense feeling watching those classic uh, films as well as you know a sense of fun with them because they're I so iconic I have a favourite for those as well 
but uh, it's probably the unconventional choice. I don't think it's on the top of any of those lists, but that's Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, it's not at the top of my list, but I do like it. I mean, it was, you know, it's like 13 years later, I think, than most, you know, it's like 1954, I want to say. I'm pretty good with movie release dates, so I think it was 1954, which is 13 years after The Wolfman came out. And that... Yeah. I mean, it, that... Do, it doesn't fit with the sort of... You know, you think classic monsters, you think 30s and early 40s. Yeah. But then you get Creature from the Black Lagoon 10 years later. And it's still great. Yeah, and, you know, with the, the way that society's moved nowadays, I think the remake of that could be really cool. I mean, you could touch on a lot of, like, environmental yeah. damage and things like that, and you could just bring it to a new level and make it even scarier. Especially if they get someone like okay this is kind of a dream but if they got James Wan to direct that I would be psyched after James Wan directs Aquaman another water based oh um, gosh I really don't want him to ruin his career with that oh, I don't think he will I'm sure he'll make a good movie I'm just afraid that DC might end up cutting it up I hope they don't I hope, yeah, I ho- fingers I hope, crossed I hope for just all out positivity from DC movies but anyway um Another question, the last question coming from Eric Monroe is best horror TV series. I'm pretty sure where you'll go on this. Oh man, that is actually a very tough one because I don't watch very many of them. But I don't even know if my favourite could be considered a pure horror, but I'm, I'm going to go classic with this. I'm going to say Twilight Zone. Yeah. We brought up Twilight Zone before as the sort of grandfather of all things creepy on TV. Yeah, but it's not just a horror series. Like, that deals no. with a lot of different issues, and you never really know what you're going to get with a Twilight Zone episode. Like, one episode could be great, one episode could be bad, but it doesn't matter because each one's different, and it gives you, like, a new perspective on most yeah. of the stuff that they were talking about at the time. And Rod Serling is the big yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, I... I um as you know, obviously Twilight Zone deserves this mention when talking about this sort of thing, but I can't get over how much fun I'm having with Ash vs. Evil Dead these days. I saw the first episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead and I haven't got back to it yet, but the pilot episode was very good, so I'm hoping it, to do a marathon with that with all yeah. the Because they they're not long either, they're like twenty five minutes long and we're only halfway through season two. It's only ten episodes in a season. You can do it, you know. You know, you can do a binge really quickly. Has Bruce Campbell still got it? Bruce Campbell will always have it. Fantastic. Bruce Campbell is the is a beast, and I love him. Um, I used I used to wonder if he was related to Nev Campbell. <laughs> that to just to just to bring up those horror families, just to sort of yeah. Like, and I wouldn't be surprised because they kind of look alike. I see that. Yeah, I see that. I don't think they are. I've never really looked into it. They might be distant relatives, who knows? Yeah, possibly. Um, so yeah. Uh, Halloween is on Monday, of course. And um, do you do anything on Halloween? What are you doing this Halloween? It's funny because I just, well, I moved to Cyprus and there's not really much Halloween events going on, but I've been hired to host a karaoke thing for a Halloween event in my local area on the Saturday. Right. And on the Monday, I'm thinking I'm just going to have a day in bed, turn all the lights down and just watch all the horror movies I can think of. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing on Monday. So I'll be right there with you. drunk this year. Watching anything. You can't go out and get drunk. You can't. That's a shame. So, there's no one here my age. Oh, well, just are they all old? Well, presumably they're all older. Just go out with yeah. a load of like fifty-year-olds. Be fine. They spend the whole night talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 um, well, getting drunk talking about Donald Trump might be might be uh, interesting. I'd love to see some like zombie versions of Donald Trump as Halloween costumes. 
Or oh, I think they Oh, I think they'll be going around. We could just go as regular Donald Trump, and that's scary. Enough. <laughs> or a Donald Trump, a Donald Trump supporter. Go, go as a Donald Trump supporter because they're scarier than him. Fair point. Anyway, I think that is uh, gonna be all I um all I need from you. If that's perfectly okay. That's fantastic, man. I'm just I'm staying up tonight, so yeah. this was a great way to start it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming along. My pleasure, dude. And I hope to get you back on soon. Ah, oh, me too. Okay, guys, that was Nolan Dean talking about his Halloween stuff and answering those questions and now we have another guest we're being overrun with guests on this episode he's in, he's new, he's not been on this uh, show before but you know him, you love him from Screen Junkies live chats and the like, it's Randall Sands Hey everyone glad to finally be here I'm... it's been a while, long time coming yeah, I'm very glad, uh, very glad to have you on. Um, so yeah, being this is the Halloween special of Horror House, uh, where does Halloween rank in terms of holidays for you? Um, for me, um, I don't know. It wasn't very big when I was growing up. Uh, in terms of like holiday wise, I mm -hmm. usually just stay at home and uh, watch movies. Yeah, and my mom would get me candy and stuff because she didn't really like me going out and trick-or-treating when I was younger um, but as I got older it definitely became a lot more fun especially like middle school high school and when you go out with your friends and you didn't have to walk around with your parents right but, uh, but I would say right it, it's it's like right underneath it's like Christmas Thanksgiving Halloween okay fall by the, lip, the wayside <laughs> okay well you're actually in the minority here. Most of us have been putting Halloween right at the top of the rankings. And it's interesting to hear that you think Halloween has got more fun as you've got older. Because I'm the complete opposite. Halloween has got far less sort of um, prevalent in my life as I've got older. When I was a kid, I would you know, always go out trick and treating, always dress up, put on Halloween part, you know, family Halloween parties. Yeah. But um yeah, now I know for a fact this year I'm just gonna be doing a big day of watching horror. Yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on this year too. You're gonna hand out some candy to the kids around the neighborhood and whatnot, but for the most part and even like for the this month I've been trying to at least watch one or two yeah. movies a day. You have to, it's October. So, there's so many. It's so hard to like. I don't even yeah. know what I'm gonna watch. Like, I've been trying to save like my favorites and stuff for the thirty first, but yeah. it's like I want to watch them all. <laughs> I know. And it's hard you can always rewatch. You can always watch them twice, three times. I've already been doing that because I'll, I'll watch them at work while I'm sitting there working, and then I'll come home and I'm like, guys, we gotta watch this one again. I know you haven't seen it, but we're gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um. Yeah, what is a what is a costume highlight from you? What is your favorite costume you've ever done? My favorite costume yeah. that I ever did. Um, I probably have two. One was I was I dressed up as the I guess it was the gold uh, ranger from Power Rangers oh, okay. when I was when I was little, when I was younger, and then I also had like a. Um, I dressed up as Harry Potter, like, yeah. one year, like, when the movies had gotten, like, the first movie had came out and gotten big. Like, I had already read all the books in, at that point. Yeah. At least several ones that had been released to that point. But, like, I, I went and had, like, the actual, like, movie robes and all that stuff that my yeah. mom got for me, which was, was really cool. Yeah, Halloween was always the, uh, well, not Halloween, Harry Potter, I should say, getting my words mixed up. Um, Harry Potter was always a favourite obviously you know being in Britain every child every child in the noughties dressed up as Harry Potter because that was just what was there um, but yeah I I did Harry Potter many times as a child but um, I've, I've already said this about 18 times in this episode already my favourite 
costume that I've ever done was last year I went as Green Man from It's Always Sunny. Oh, oh that's a good one. <laughs> I, I, like, we did have like a lot of people in college like do something like they would just get like all the random colors that you could find. Like there was someone that was dressed with those American flags, which sounds <laughs> a little iffy on wearing an American flag like that, but each <laughs> 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 his own. But <laughs> Suit yeah. Or what's going on? Um, yeah, I mean, people just saw a guy in a green skin suit, but I I knew who I was really. That's all that matters. Because it's always sunny. It's painfully underwatched. It really is. Like it's surprising, like how many people I know that haven't seen it or don't enjoy it. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, it's some of the funniest programming it is, ever. It's, it's the original. funniest like, show on television. Yeah. He was a pretty he was a pretty good actor. Like he he's underrated in himself. Like yeah. he, the fact that he's on there doing it out of like out of passion alone. Like, yeah. That that's amazing to me. Oh yeah, well, you know, that there was a reason I went as green man. It was because my love for it's always sunny last year it was absolutely you know, way, way, way too high. And um <laughs> it was a cold night as well and I had to brave that. Oh. Yeah, and uh, they're not no, they're not. It was it was interesting. Uh, anyway, I do have a few questions that were sent Bye. in uh, before this episode. Nolan Dean, our previous guest, asks best horror villain. Best horror villain. Hmm. Man, that's... that is a tough one. Yeah, it's not an easy one. I went with um, Freddy before. Yeah, like Fre Freddy is like sometimes I'll, I'll try to think of like something that's not so obvious, like on the nose. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I guess I guess in terms of in terms of villains, uh, I don't know, like in ter like for it, of all the slasher films, I would have to go Michael Myers. Mm. Like, um, but I'll, but well, I was watching. Uh, Scream last night. It's been a while since I've yeah. seen it. Probably a few years, and, and like I really, I really enjoy how they portray Ghostface. Yeah, no Ghostface killer in that movie. Nolan says Ghostface. Yeah, as yeah. well. It, it, it's a, it's a, like it, and it, I think it's mostly because of how the movie is in itself. But like, yeah, it's, I I don't want to. I know it's been a long time. I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen it, of course. But just the, how how it all unfolds in the movie. Yeah, like with that killer and everything. Like it's just. Wes Craven's a master. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Wes. I know. It's so, and it's still so soon. We lost so many people over the last two years. Yeah, I know. Too, too, too difficult. These, uh, too difficult years. These last two have been. Yeah. Um, Billy Billy Pollahan asks obscure or underrated horror titles. And uh, this is this is one that I actually. Um, had gotten and we were talking to uh Brian Miss Movies yep. uh, about um recently and I was and I thought about it and it's one that doesn't really come up too much at least here in the states um but the descent the descent I uh, love the descent yeah like that that movie and it's like especially it being like filmed here in North Carolina where I'm from yeah and like being based in the mountains here like it it just gives it a little bit extra um like in the scare yeah. factors. But, like, the reason that movie is, like, really, really, like, one of my favorites in terms of horror is it gives you, like, it makes me feel claustrophobic. Oh, like, yeah. when they're crawling through the tunnels. It's stuff, one of the like, best claustrophobic films yeah. and, and, I've and, ever like, seen. It, that's why I like Alien as well. Yeah. Like, mostly because, like, it, you're, they're, when you're stuffed in that tube, like, it, it, I get that same feeling because I've, I've been stuck in places before, like, up in the mountains, like, mm. trying to get through and, like, yeah. just seeing someone else go through it. I know that that feeling and it's not fun so well, yeah. it's like am I going to be here forever <laughs> well yeah I mean if you've been stuck in the uh, same well not the same because it's obviously cave diving yeah. or whatever they call it um, if you've been stuck in the mountains you know thinking similar things to what the women in the descent would be thinking you know that even brings a more sort of response you know a more intense response from you personally Pretty much, yeah. And that, that, yeah. Anytime, that, that, those are the movies that always usually get me the most. Is like claustrophobia. Like I can get past yeah. gore. I yeah. can get past jump scares. All that stuff. Like that's easy stuff. Like when I'm seeing someone just like stuck somewhere. 
they yeah. can't get out. That's <laughs> that's real terror. That's yeah. real horror. Yeah, because I, I don't, I wouldn't personally enjoy it, and I'm no. sure they're not enjoying it either. <laughs> no, they are not. Um, you yourself asked best horror genre. If you want to talk a bit about what you think that is. Uh, for me, it's mostly monster films. I'm a big, yeah. like, I'm really big into like monsters. Um, like but, Godzilla type monsters or like, your Frankenstein. Like, I, I, like, I like I like Frankenstein. I like the thing. I like yeah. Godzilla. Like any anything that's got a big monster in it, like something like that. I usually enjoy like even alien films. Yeah. Um, and like anything with extraterrestrial abducting mm-hmm. people, things just things of that nature. Um, why yeah. that? Why that one above all others? You know, there's loads of subgenres of horror. You know, it's the genre with the most subgenres. Uh, so what, 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 the, what is it about monsters in particular that you gravitate towards? Um, I don't know. It, it, I think the the fascination came from like an early age. Mm. Um, but, like the early, the earliest movies I remember seeing when I was a kid, like like the aliens. Yeah. And, and all the and predator. You watched um, Predator as a child. Alien, Aliens, Alien Three, Predator, uh, Terminator Two, like because <laughs> my dad was like big into like the rock star yeah. life, of doing hospitality for bands and having right. his own band and stuff. So like when they would be practicing, like his friends had a laser disc player oh. at their house when I was younger, and I was probably like four, and they would just, they would just put in movies like they put in Terminator or they put that's in insane. Alien and just and I would just sit there and watch those movies. Like they never really bothered me as a kid. That's probably why I'm so desensitized to horror. Yeah. At this point, <laughs> they ruined me <laughs> if as a child. Watching Alien and Predator as a four-year-old, I think you would be pretty desensitized by now. Yeah, that's probably that's probably why I wasn't scared of like Jurassic Park because like, that's the first movie I ever saw in theaters. Right, so that's a good horror. movie. To, that's a good first yeah. movie to ever see in theaters. Uh, that's cinemas. my favorite. That's my favorite movie of all time. Number one on my list always will be. It doesn't matter if anything was better before or after. Like Jurassic Park is my thing. Well, like it's, a, it's, it's a good one to have up there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so I I don't know. Like mo- like monster films have just always fascinated me. Like I, like when I was younger, um, I I remember having like this really 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 terrifying like night terror. Mm. she raises up to and she's got a bloody face and she's just like staring at me and she starts crawling towards me just saying help me mm. help me and of course I'm like, at this point I'm running out of the room yeah. I'm standing at the top of the stairs yelling for my dad like, yeah. hey, come get me I don't come blame me. you and it's weird because, like it, it was a weird moment because I don't remember like really ever having like I could see this thing while still being awake at least I thought I was awake I'm pretty sure I was awake and like it's, it, it was got off the bed, started walking towards me, and I bet you hate like the grudge and the ring and stuff. Then yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I, I I I I hate the characters in them, like only especially like the Japanese, like Ring Yu and stuff. Yeah, like, those movies were more terrifying to me than the American version. Yeah. But like just like that moment, like that thing, like it didn't disappear out of my sight and everything until my dad had grabbed me and brought me yeah. downstairs. So I was like, from then on, like any, any anything like that, like any just horror has always been a big genre. Yeah. For me, um, and it it seemed like throughout like the '90s and early 2000s, there just weren't too many like great horror films coming out. No. I had the, no. Uh, uh, like opportunity to be able to see as a child. Mm-hmm. And well, like I'm starting to finally discover a lot of those movies and hidden gems now. Well, yeah. I mean, but. That's why we look back on certain things and try and find these ones that may have flown under the radar and we almost end up loving them or loving some of them more than the more obvious ones sometimes. Yeah, like I had never seen The Thing until this year. Like wow. John Carpenter's The Thing, I would never seen it. I'd like seen like the practical effects and like uh, books that I had read yeah. like, for stuff like that. Like when I was doing stuff with like like studying Stan Winston's like practical effects work mm-hmm. and all that 
and I remember seeing like certain things in different books about like the character and the practical effects and that's mm-hmm. I've always been really big into practical like, I feel like it's oh yeah it's necessary for yeah. a lot of things and it's kind of fallen by the wayside in modern film yeah but, um, which is why I really appreciate it when it comes back every so often and you see a fully practical film oh yeah and it's few and far between these days but it is it, it definitely brings a lot more realism to yeah definitely, uh, like definitely, definitely. Movies. okay great um the last question comes from eric monroe and he asked best horror tv series Right, yeah. And, and, I, and I didn't think that I would enjoy it as much as I have. It has been thoroughly enjoyable. It, it's got the scares. It's got the effects. And right. It, it's, it's also, like, I love that they tied it into the original movie as well. Right, see, I haven't got around to watching that yet, but I have heard pretty positive things about it. I was one who, you know, thought it was just, what, like, why are they doing this? Yeah, I was the same way. Like, they, it just seems like all the TV shows this year are just like remakes, like we Lethal Weapon. Yeah, like, the, <laughs> they're just like going through everything at this point. Like last year, they had Rush Hour that didn't oh, work out. Yeah, but uh, no, but that if, if you get a chance, I, I they have that's only like five episodes. Yeah, um, well, I think really you know from what I've heard off, well, you and plenty more other trustworthy horror people, um. The Exorcist series might actually be worth my time, and I didn't think I'd be saying that. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I said the same thing, and I ended up binging the first five episodes like over the past two days. Yeah, what? Uh, very, very. It was it was very enjoyable. Yeah, well, I mean, great. I think that's uh, about it for all we uh, all we need you for. If you want to get uh, going now. Of course, I hope to, you know, you will be back at some point in the near future in a full episode of your own. Yeah, whenever you're ready to have me back, um, I'm, I'll make time for you. Great. Well, I can't wait for that day to come because I've been wanting to get you on for ages. I know. <laughs> Between me moving and a whole bunch of other stuff, it's just been hectic the past couple of months for me. Yeah. I'm sorry, I haven't been more available. Hey, you but don't apologise for moving. <laughs> anyway, thank you, thank you so much for oh, thank doing you. this. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. Great. I will see you soon, guys. The guests are flowing in in this episode. We are now joined by Billy Pollahan. You know him. You love him. <laughs> Oh, we all love you. Yeah, I love you too, Morgan. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, this is the Halloween special. So, um, what does Halloween mean to you? Halloween is a time where I could just cut back, um, pull some pranks a little bit, and just let the little bit of darkness inside us go. But not let it go too far, you know? Not be a total dick. Well, but... <laughs> Just sort of like, just revel in the fact that it's okay to be scared for once this year. You can dress up. Of course it is. Not have people look at you weird rather than conventions. And it's just an all around, it's a beautiful looking holiday. I'm like the leaves change. Yeah. um, Where I live and it looks like a postcard. It's, it's unbelievable. 
Yeah, so tell tell me uh, about some of these pranks then, because oh, you know, just like uh, um, TPing houses, ah, and all okay, that kind of stuff, um, scaring people. Like recently in the United States, there's been a lot of people uh, dressing up as clowns. Yeah, that's moved I, over here as well now. I personally don't have a fear of clowns, but I, I completely understand why people may be afraid of clowns. I am afraid so, of clowns. I find it hilarious, but I can understand why people could get upset at that. Yeah. As, as long as you don't actually, you know, like physically touch somebody or, you know, take it too far. Yeah. To go too into character, then I think it's, I think it's fine. And it's a good way for, uh, spread some Halloween spirit and yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always loved scaring people. That, that's one of my favourite parts about Halloween. You find people that scare easily and you just do everything you can to just keep trying to scare them more and more. It's entertaining, if anything. Yeah, and um, it's, it's really just... It's a very unique time of year yeah. that I always look forward to. Not only that, we have a bunch of Halloween movies just from every decade and there's always a we gem do. or two even the 50s where it's like all schlock you can't help but just enjoy the 50s is a very fun time for horror oh yeah the b movie age yeah um i do have oh before we get onto these questions actually i've asked everyone else this uh, what is the um what is the best costume you've ever done the best halloween costume Best costume. Um, many many years ago, um, I think I was like eight or something. I had a craze. Well, I still have a craze, but for Dracula. So right. I basically dressed up as the traditional Lugosi Dracula. Mm -hmm. I just slicked my hair back. I had a medallion, cape, everything, and it was just so fun. Yeah. Uh, my brother was Buzz Lightyear, and <laughs> I was. I was Dracula. I was the only kid who was Dracula. And my what? Best friend, really? Um, he, he was Elvis because he was a he was a little bit heavier, so he, he went to Elvis. And right. I was just, everyone looked at me like, why are you Dracula? And I'm just like, because he's cool. Yeah. And he, Dracula's the coolest one out of those three. Yeah. He and actually, that includes Elvis. He can talk to you and seduce you and you know it's more terrifying that way i lost that medallion and i don't know where that costume is now but i can say the coolest costume was uh that that or superman because if anybody knows me they know i'm a huge <laughs> yes superman you are fan. yes you are how was your superman one then did that get a lot of love yeah i was in kindergarten and oh that's young then yeah, everybody loved it. They, they always thought, they were like, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> yeah, I actually spray painted my hair black for Brilliant. Um, for Dracula and Superman because I have brown hair. Like, it's dark brown, but it's it's not like jet black, so I had to spray paint it. And the only downside was washing it out. It's yeah. not fun. I, I tried um, spray painting my hair green for Joker. Uh, once and that didn't go well my bathroom turned out a horrible light shade of yellowy green which uh, I couldn't get off the tiles so that was a nightmare that's my experience with spray painting my hair um, but yeah we do have a couple of questions that were sent in before this episode uh, Nolan Dean asks best horror villain what do you have to say about uh, that? Of course, Nolan has a good question. Um, I gotta say, Freddy Krueger. I, mean, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's hard because, again, I love Dracula. If we're going like classic. Oh, if we're going classic, classic yeah. I uh, then, I didn't think of Dracula. classic going into this. I will admit. Um, if we're talking favorite, maybe horror character, I'm going oh, with yeah. I'm going with Dracula. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, like villain, like your villain. standard villain, it's Freddy. Freddy's the one for me. Yeah, it's because he has a personality. Yeah. And he 
has the best um, way of killing people, and that's in their dreams. He does. Because everybody has to go to sleep. Yeah. At some point, that's what makes him so terrifying is because he will have fun with it. Yeah. But also, sometimes, at least when it started out, the Nightmare Report or Nightmare on Elm Street series, it was legitimately terrifying. Oh, yeah. And Robert England. Yeah. I got to give him props. You know, Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers, they're still awesome and they're icons. But Freddy was played by Robert England almost every single time. And yeah. you got to admit, that is a testament to how much he loves the character and just how much we love him. Well, yeah, I mean, he still loves the character. You still see him going to, like, meetups and things dressed as freddy or acting like freddy at least i mean that's that shows the love like some people would get tired of maybe you know seeing themselves as typecast but robert england doesn't yeah it's like what vincent price did exactly because vincent exactly. price he was typically typecast as horror but he used that as his legacy and i yeah. think that's just awesome yeah well great uh, you yourself asked obscure or underrated horror titles if you had any in mind when you were asked that question when I was asked that question I recently watched a film because I've been watching a film every single day mm -hmm. and I've been tweeting and putting on Facebook about what they are Yeah. but I also just I go for like an extra one every other day just because and I watch Pumpkinhead Oh, okay. It's, it is a. It's really something that I don't want to go too much into detail on because mm -hmm. it would give away a lot of the plot. Mm -hmm. But it's not at all what you expect. But if I have to sell it, then two words I'm going to put is just Lance Henriksen. And he is great. And the practical effects yeah. are. They always stand the test of time. Yeah, any practical effect does, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. I still haven't watched the thing, but that's oh. definitely on my list. Definitely. You need list. to watch. You need to watch that by Monday. Scratch yeah. anything else you have on the cards. What well, you need to get watching the thing. Um, I, I think I can scratch out Jaws and do that. I'm sure you've watched Jaws about seventy times anyway, so. A what? <laughs> that, guy oh, awesome. that guy that guy makes the film you say what you want about oh, everyone yeah. else it's that guy um, Randall Sands asked best horror genre like sub genre oh man um, there's just so many to choose from yeah. but I guess if I have to pick I gotta go just slasher I yeah mean, because it's, it's fun it's all yeah, it's very fun. It's cliche as hell. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't help but just just enjoy those stereotypes. Like, you know, there's the there's the horny couple that obviously gets the first axe. Yeah. There's the black guy. There's the main girl that will be the last survivor, the pothead, mm -hmm. everything. And th there's also a silent killer... It's in a familiar setting, whether it be a campground, yeah. a home, or just, um, it, it could be really anywhere, and they are very creative with the kills. They are. I mean, there, there are plenty of other subgenres, you know, oh, like yeah, this zombies, or, um, I consider the universal monsters yeah. to be a genre of their own. Yeah, we, uh, we brought up the, um... The Universal Monsters uh, a bit ago um, but yeah everybody seems to sort of gravitate towards slashers because they're more fun yeah, which is you know it's perfectly understandable um, just, uh, fun. yeah Eric Monroe asked best horror TV series Ooh. 
Oh, so you're getting a uh, an impression show here as well, guys. Um, Tales from the Crypt. I love the Crypt Keeper so much. <laughs> he alone makes that show so much worth it. And it's hard because I don't really consider Twilight Zone to be a horror. I consider that more as a science fiction mm -hmm. show. And it's, that, think, it's creepy, though. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has its creepy episodes and everything, but... Like, if we're talking straight-up horror, that's, you can't yeah. deny it. It's Tales from the Crypt. I mean, it's HBO. You go back and you see a lot of amazing guest stars. I mm -hmm. I could probably take ten minutes just naming them all. And you'd be like, they were on... They did that? Just... And they're all really good stories that they took from actual comic books. Yeah. And they are all... Um, again, they're elevated a little by mm -hmm. introductions with the Crypt Keeper. Mm -hmm. He always has a good introduction, and he always gives great horror puns. Which is just something everybody loves. You have to have a good horror pun. I'm surprised Tales from the Crypt hasn't come up earlier than this, to be honest. You're the first person to even mention it. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I mean there are other shows out there that are good, but if I have to put a gun to my head, I'm going to say Tales from the Crypt. Mm, well, I'm, I mean, no no one else has seemed to show as much love for Ash vs. Evil Dead as me yet. Oh, no, no, dude, but I that's, love Ash vs. Evil Dead. That was my pick. Yeah, it's so good. I got to meet uh, Dana DeLorenzo oh. and Ray Santiago, and they are just Where was excited. that? Where did you meet um, them? Um, Kelly and Ray. No, yeah, but where, where, where did you meet them? Oh, yeah, uh, Chicago. Oh, they had okay. the. It was Bruce Campbell as well. And Bruce Campbell is. Uh, he's just like Ash. He's very eccentric, yeah. and he had like a different color suit on every day. Like he had a baby blue suit one day, then the bright pink one, and he just. He's very cool with the fans. Of course, he, really he is. Does the day I get to meet the day I meet Bruce Campbell is the day I'm legitimately happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully he comes to England sometime soon. Or I, the UK. I doubt it, but we can always hey, uh, can keep up hope. Can hope. We can always keep up hope. That should uh, that should do us, I think. For all oh. I need you for. I told all you. Right. I told you it wasn't going to take very long. That's true. That's very true. Um. Yeah, thanks for doing this anyway. Yeah, um, and um, if you ever need guests, then you know I'll be happy to do it. Of course, I will have you back some point soon, definitely. Because you haven't been yeah. on since episode 5. And that was a while ago. And I, got a, I have a good topic oh, for okay. uh, when, when I come back. So, well, guys, this was fun. Well, guys, look out for Billy coming back soon, too, as well as everybody else, because everyone wants to come back, which is just something I love. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for stopping by. Well, guys, that is going to do it for this Halloween special of Horror House. Uh, it has been a very, very long episode. I'm perfectly aware of that. Um, but it's been a very fun one. Please let me know if you liked this whole uh, multiple guest uh, situation because I, I had a great time recording this episode. I hope you had a great time listening to it. Um, as always, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Horror House Pod. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel for all the... Uh, all the other content that's coming and more of this of course uh, you can follow me on twitter that is at the purple don you can follow sam on twitter that is at orange juice ard uh, tom is at odd shape panel kimber at sj plus junkie um, nolan at nolan dean 27 randall at randall sands and billy at Buster Bill. I think I did well getting all those in such quick time. 
Um, but yes, guys, that is going to do it for this Halloween special of Horror House. Please let me know what you thought of it. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>